coalitional games. We'll look at the definitions, super additivity and convexity of a coalitional game, um, imputation, core, and linear programming formulation. These are the topics for this lecture. Definitions. So we have a set of agents, this script N, and uh, here's an example. N is A, B, C, D, E, F. These are the agents of this uh, grand coalition. And uh, this uh, italics N is uh, the uh, number of agents, that is the cardinality of the set uh, of agents, uh, the cardinality of the grand coalition. Coalitions, uh, or rather sub-coalitions, uh, since this um, is the grand coalition, sub-coalitions are subset uh, of the grand coalition. So C1 is A, D, C2 is B, C3 is B, E, C4 is C, E, F. These are examples of coalitions. A coalition structure, script S, is a set of sub-coalitions, C1, C2, until Ck. So this is a coalitional structure and uh, such that for each Ck uh, um, belonging to uh, the grand uh, coalition uh, and uh, also for any other coalition Ck prime, again in the grand coalition, uh, we must have CK intersection CK prime uh, is equal to null. In other words, these uh, sub-coalitions in the coalition structure are uh, uh, disjoint subsets of N. And union of all these uh, sub-coalitions equals to N. So uh, if we take the union, of all these coalitions, it must cover all the elements of N, which are all the agents. For example, uh, this is a coalition structure. S equals C1, C2, C4 is a coalition structure because um, they're all disjoint here. Uh, A, D, and C2 is B, and here you have four uh, C, E, F. So um, they're covering all the agents, A through F, and they're all uh, mutually disjoint. Therefore, this is a coalition structure. But you cannot include uh, uh, C1, C2, and C3 because C3 and C2 are not disjoint. They have B in common. The value of uh, any coalition um, is a mapping from 2 to the n. So it takes a uh, subset of n that is a coalition and then it returns a non-negative real number and we shall assume that the value uh, excuse me the value of the null coalition is always equal to zero a transferable uh, utility game um, or tu game is uh, one class of games uh, where the value of any coalition can be divided among the agents in that coalition. Suppose the value of C1 is 5, then this 5 can be divided between A and D in some sort of manner. Then it's a transferable utility games. game. Super additive games and convex games. So we are given a coalition game. Uh, this is the set of agents, and this is the value function, which is a mapping from uh, a coalition of a sub coalition of uh, n to a real number. Now suppose we have two coalitions C and D, which are subsets of n. This is the property that must be satisfied for this coalition game to be super additive. C intersection D is equal to zero implies that V of C union D must be greater than equal to value of C plus value of D. 
So, this condition must be satisfied. C intersection D have to be 0. We have to consider two disjoint correlations and the value of C union D must be greater than equal to the values, the individual values of C and D combined. This is an example of a super additive game. Why? Because let's take B as one coalition and C as one coalition, um, that is joint coalitions. And uh, what's B uh, union C? It's uh, BC. The values of uh, this coalition and this coalition both are 1. And when you take their union, the value is 3. And 3 is greater than or equal to 1 plus 1, which satisfies this condition. And you can check that all uh, subcoalitions C and D will uh, satisfy this condition. So this is the definition of a super additive game. Convexity. Now, this is a more general case. We don't take the special case when C and D are disjoint anymore. Given any pair of coalitions C and D, the value of C union D must be greater than or equal to the value of C plus the value of D minus the value of C intersection D. Now, this example that we considered earlier is super additive but not convex. Now, in our uh, definition of, of super additivity, this was 0 because C intersection D was null because C and D were disjoint and the value of a null coalition is equal to 0. Now, let's see why this example is not convex. We take C to be equal to A plus B, sorry, A comma B and D is A comma C. So, these are um, our coalitions here, C and D, and they need not be disjoint. We have A in common. Now, C union D is A, B, C and C intersection D is A. Now, let's look at the values. Value of C, AB is 2. Value of AC, that's D, is also 2. So, V of C is 2, V of D is 2. Value of C union D is ABC, value of ABC is 3. So, this is 3 and value of C intersection D is 0 because C intersection D is A and the value of A alone is 0. But value of C union D, which is 3 here, is not greater than or equal to value of C plus value of D, both of which are 2, minus value of C intersection D, which is 0. This condition is not satisfied. So our example is super additive, but not convex. And we will be seeing shortly that a convex game, a convex game is always super additive. So we just saw that convexity is a more restrictive condition than super additivity. Let's formalize it. Lemma, the set of convex games is a subset of the set of super additive games. Or in other words, convexity implies superadditivity. So if this property holds, we have to show that this other property, superadditivity, also holds. So let's assume that we have two uh, subcoalitions of the grand coalition, C and D, and convexity holds so that V C union D is greater than or equal to VC plus VD minus VC intersection D. Let's see if it satisfies this condition for superadditivity. 
Now here we have to take a special case. We have to consider the case only when C intersection D is null. C and D therefore must be disjoint sets. In that case, V of C intersection D is equal to zero. So we let this equal to zero. In which case we get D C union D is greater than equal to V C plus B D. Whence this condition is automatically satisfied. Therefore, superadditivity holds. In other words, we just proved that convexity implies superadditivity. Imputation. Now, suppose we have this uh, coalition game. Uh, N is the grand coalition. And uh, the value of the grand coalition is 7 in this little example here. N is A, B, C. Now, X is a payoff. Um, informally speaking, it's the monetary amount that each agent gets from this grand coalition. So it's a vector in n dimensions of real numbers where n is uh, the number of agents. Feasibility. Feasibility implies that summation of all these individual payoffs must be less than equal to value of n. Thus, in other words, it means that here we have 7, and this 7 can be divided amongst this uh, such that there is no deficit. Suppose Vn was 7, and we had to pay each agent uh, pi, 5, and 5. There's no way uh, 7 can be divided into pi, 5, 5. There'll be a deficit. So, uh, Feasibility is when there is no deficit. So summation xi is less than equal to B of n. Or in other words, 1 transpose x is less than equal to V of n. This is the condition for feasibility. Efficiency is when there's no surplus remaining either. So whatever the value of the grand coalition, that must be divided amongst the agents with no surplus left behind. So efficiency implies that summation xi should be equal to the value of n. Or in other words, uh, 1 transpose x is equal to v of n. I use lowercase bolds for vectors, column vectors, and uh, uppercase uh, board for matrices and uh, everything by default is a um, column vector so one transpose is a row vector since one is a column vector it's a column vector of all, all ones one 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 in this case individual rationality now individual rationality means for each agent i x sub i must be greater than equal to v of i. What's this v of i? v of i is the value of agent i alone. That is, if agent i were treated as a sub-coalition on its own, then this is the monetary amount that agent i would make. However, in this grand coalition, it's getting some other payment here, and that payment is xi. And xi must be greater than or equal to the value of i alone. That's called individual rationality. It means that by staying in this grand coalition, the agent i will benefit more monetarily than by forming its own separate coalition, by breaking away from this grand coalition. That's called individual rationality. And then group rationality is, um, I'll take up an example later to make this clear. Group rationality is for any sub-coalition, let's say B and C is a sub-coalition, then summation XII belongs to uh, C, uh, greater than or equal to value of C. So, in other words, B and C, suppose 
they form their own coalition and uh, they get uh, three uh, the total uh, value of a coalition from b and c alone is three but here they're making together they're making five instead of three and so b and c are incentivized to stay in this grand coalition and that's group rationality if this condition is not satisfied then some combination of the agents say b and c will try to break away if b c alone is worth let's say uh, uh, six b and c this coalition of b and c is worth six but here they're making b and c together are making five then why should they remain in this grand coalition? They'll break away and form their own sub coalition and they'll get a value of six out of it, which can be divided in a better way than two and three. Maybe each will get uh, three um, or 2.5 and 3.5. Imputation. So this is a payoff vector and imputation is a payoff vector that is efficient and individually rational. So summation xi must be equal to the value of the coalition. So all these elements must add up to value of the coalition and it must be individually rational. This is individually rational, this x here. Why? Uh, how much is agent A getting? 2. Its value alone is 1. So 2 is more than 1. A is benefiting by staying in this coalition. Value of B is likewise 1. It's getting 2 here. So it's also benefiting. And V of C is 3. So it does make a difference to see whether it stays in the coalition or um, forms its own standalone. But at least uh, for A and B, uh, they're definitely benefiting. So this is an individually rational payoff vector. And since it also satisfies efficiency, 2 plus 3 plus 2 equals 7, which is the value of the grand coalition. Therefore, this, sorry, this doesn't satisfy um, individual rationality. This satisfies satisfies both individual rationality and efficiency and so this is an imputation these and these are not imputation the, although this here is efficient you see value of c alone is three but x of c is only two so in this payoff agent c is incentivized to break away because it will make one dollar more suppose the uh, unit is dollars okay so efficient plus individually rational payoff is an imputation another lemma a super additive gain has a non-empty set of imputations proof let us say xi equals value of agent i plus 1 over n value of the grand coalition minus summation of bi values of the agents individually taken now from super additivity we know that v of n will be more than summation v of i so this is a positive quantity and therefore xi equals vi plus something positive which means that xi is greater than equal to vi whence x is individually rational this holds for all agents i and now we have to show that xi is efficient let's see how so summation xi must be equal to the value of the coalition. So let's take summation 
of Xi over all the agents in the grand coalition, which is equal to summation of uh, Vi plus 1 over n Vn minus summation Vi, which is equal to, now let me open up uh, this parenthesis, uh, the bigger one. So the first term is summation of Vi over all uh, agents. Second term is summation of Vn and 1 over n. So what's summation of Vn? Uh, I belongs to n uh, of Vn. So we're repeating. Uh, there are, remember, n terms in the summation. And so if we repeat this Vn n times, we, are, we get n times Vn and we also have a 1 over n, so they cancel out. We are left with Vn here. And here, summation n of uh, 1 over n of summation i, uh, Vi, will uh, give you n times, this inner summation is n times summation Vi, uh, when you take this and then you are dividing it by n again, so we are left with this. Summation i of vi. And so this is uh, a positive term. This is the same uh, with a minus here. And so they cancel out. We are left with v of n. So summation xi equals v of n, which proves that x is efficient. Therefore, x is individually rational and efficient. It satisfies both these properties, so x is an imputation. In other words, a superadditive game has a non-empty set of imputations. It has at least one imputation of this form. Core. We've looked at group rationality briefly. Now, Let's go over it again. Group rationality implies if you take any sub-coalition of the grand coalition N, then uh, you add off the um, payoffs of the agents in the coalition. That must be greater than equal to the value of that sub-coalition itself. In other words, all the agents I in the grand coalition, none of them have a incentive to form a sub-coalition C because this way they're getting more payoff together than they would make together if they were to form a smaller coalition by themselves. And we can represent this uh, in this form. Now here C is a binary vector of indicator variables. Uh, uh, the, in the corresponding places, it will be a zero if um, the agent is not a part of the coalition C, and otherwise it will be a one when that member, uh, excuse me, that agent is a member of C. So here, uh, this is uh, the null coalition. So we, none of them, uh, we have three agents here, none of them are members. So we have zero, zero, zero. A, so we have 1 in place of A here and 0, 0. This is B, is 0, 1, 0, because B is a member of this coalition consisting of B here. And lastly, at this end, ABC is the grand coalition itself. So it's 1, 1, 1, indicating that all of these agents are members of C. And these are the values of the coalitions defined by uh, this C transpose here. C will be a uh, column vector, so C transpose is a row vector. So we can uh, define group rationality in this manner too. C transpose X, where X is the um, imputation or the payoff vector, uh, is greater than equal to value of the coalition. Which coalition? C defined using this vector C. Now, this imputation here is not group rational. Why not? Because, let's see why not. Uh, 
if we take uh, this C, C transpose equals 0, 1, 1, okay, uh, where 0, 1, 1 here, B, C. Now, here, agents B and C together are going to make uh, $4. But if you look at a separate coalition of C and B alone, so this B, C coalition, here they'll make $5. So why should they remain uh, in um, this grand coalition? They have an incentive to break away because they'll make more uh, money by breaking away. 4 is great, not greater than or equal to 5, which should be satisfied for group rationality. In other words, with this imputation, uh, the coalition is not stable. Now, this imputation is actually group rational. You can easily verify uh, why. Uh, 3 and 4, B and C make uh, 3 plus 4, 7 here. But uh, if they were to form a separate coalition, it will be only 5. Likewise, you can look at all possible cases, and this property will be satisfied with this x. So this is a group rational um, imputation. The core is the set of group rational imputations, group rational or stable imputations. That's the definition of a core. Now this example will make it clear. Uh, sometimes I use uh, letters for uh, agents, but here I've used uh, the numbers 1, 2, and 3 for the three agents. Sorry for the discrepancy here, but um, that was because I have three coordinates representing the three agents. So uh, these um, are the possible sub-coalitions of uh, the grand coalition consisting of 1, 2, and 3. And these are the values of those subcoalitions C. And now let's look at this three-dimensional uh, space. Now consider this uh, blue triangular uh, region here. At this point, x1 gets 10 and x2 and x3 get 0. So this point, at this point, uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 add up to 10. Here, x2 gets 10 and x1 and x3 get 0. Again, uh, at this point, uh, the three values 0, 10, 0 add up to 10, which is the value of the grand coalition. And it's the same here. So this triangle is the set of all efficient payoffs. Take any point in this triangle, uh, the coordinates x1 and x2 and x3 will add up to 10. Now let's consider individual rationality. We ignore the first column here. We know that uh, the null coalition has a value of 0. Now this coalition of 1 alone has a value of 1. This coalition 2 has a value of 2. And this coalition of this agent 3 alone has a value of 2. So let's mark off um, where x1 equals 1. It's this line here, the green dotted line. Along this dotted line, x1 equals 1. This is the point where x3 gets 10 and um, x1 gets 0. Here x2 gets 10 and x1 gets 0. So everywhere here, here x1 gets 0. Here x1 in this dotted line, x1 gets 1. And so this is where x1 less than equal to 1 in this region here. And so we can mark off this uh, region. So we cannot include this region because it's not individually rational from agent one's standpoint. Likewise, if we look at 
um, x3 here, x3 has to make at least 2. Along this line, x2 gets 0. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, x3. Uh, we're considering x3 and x. So x3 gets 0 uh, along this line. And here, at x3 gets 2. So this region, again, uh, does not satisfy individual rationality. And likewise, neither does this region. So whatever remains is individually rational. And that's this green triangle here. The corners are 1, 2, 7, 6, 2, 2, and 1, 7, 2. It's bounded by these uh, lines x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2, and x3 equals 2. And so this is the set of imputations. It satisfies individual rationality. Now let's take a look at group rationality. We see that a coalition formed from agents 1 and 2 have a value of 5 here. So x1 plus x2 uh, must be greater than or equal to 5. This straight line here represents x1 plus x2 equals 5. And uh, if you look at this point here, it's... Um, x3 equals 10, so x1 plus x2 equals 0 here, and here x1 plus x2 equals 5. Therefore, this region here does not uh, 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 adhere to group rationality for agents A and, uh, sorry, 1 and 2. Likewise, consider agents 1 and 3 the value of this coalition is 7 and so we must have x1 plus x2 must be greater than or equal to 7. In this region x1 x1 plus x3 should be greater than or equal to 7 and in this region here x1 plus x3 is less than 7. Here x1 plus x3 is 0. So this region here also uh, does not uh, stick to this condition for group rationality and likewise we can uh, uh, look at this uh, coalition 2 of 2 and 3 and this straight line here x1 plus oh excuse me this straight line here x2 plus x3 uh, equals 6 is this and this also does not uh, take uh, uh, satisfy group rationality. So eliminating all these uh, um, regions which do not uh, satisfy group rationality, what we are left with is this. This red region here uh, is group rational. Any point there is group rational. So this set of points in this red trapezoid, they are efficient, individually rational, and group rational. The blue triangle here represents all efficient payoffs, and this red, excuse me, uh, green triangle here represents um, the set of imputations which satisfy individual rationality, and this red trapezoid here um, contains a set of points which are also group rational. And this is the core of this game. This trapezoid here, because it satisfies efficiency, individual rationality, and group rationality. Core of a superadditive game. Uh, we'll look at a linear programming formulation next. We've defined feasibility. 1 transpose x is less than or equal to value of n. 
and efficiency is one transpose x is equal to value of n and uh, we can see that efficiency is a special case of feasibility so let's ignore feasibility and we'll stick to efficiency one transpose x is equal to v of n now individual rationality uh, can be defined in this manner and group rationality can also be defined uh, in this manner. Now here we've, uh, we've seen that C is a, a vector of uh, binaries, the zeros and ones, and um, each C corresponds to a subcoalition of the grand coalition N. And uh, C transpose X must be greater than or equal to V of C. And this must hold for every C, um, including uh, uh, where only one entry is one, which corresponds to only one agent uh, being in the coalition. Hence, group rationality implies individual rationality. Now, in this example here, we can take all these uh, vectors C and arrange them in this form as a matrix. Therefore, uh, the constraint that X must satisfy group rationality can be written um, in this form. C transpose X greater than or equal to V. This is a matrix uppercase C containing all the uh, lowercase C's. And this vector V here uh, is formed out of the values of the different sub-coalitions of the grand coalition. And so far it was implicit that all the x's must be greater than or equal to zero. No agent is going to get a negative payoff. <coughs> so we can express this condition as a vector x greater than or equal to zero. And we choose to minimize one transpose x. So this is what the condition looks like uh, specific to our example here. I've simply ignored this null coalition here and I've taken these um, C's, not the C transposes, C's and they are the columns here. Note that uh, I've rearranged the columns. Uh, so the first one is 0, 0, 001. Uh, that's uh, this one corresponding to C here. And the second one, likewise, is 0, 010, zero, which corresponds to this B here. So here I'm following the usual um, uh, binary notation here, 0, 0, 001, 0, 10, zero, 011, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 7. Anyway, so this is C transpose. And C transpose X is greater than or equal to this is V, I formed V by taking the corresponding values of uh, the coalitions and putting them as a column vector. Now, note one thing here. The last row here, 1, 1, 1, multiplied with x greater than or equal to 10. What does this say? The grand coalition, 1, 1, 1, is basically the grand coalition. And here, this is the value of the grand coalition. Now, we must have this uh, value of the grand coalition uh, in order to uh, have x uh, be efficient. We cannot let 1, 1, 1 of x be more than 10, the value of the grand coalition. In other words, this greater than equal will become uh, equality for the last row only. So this is the constraint uh, in vector matrix form. And so we choose to minimize one transpose X subject to these constraints. It's implicit that all these X's are greater than zero. So I write it down as another constraint here. This is the LP formulation. And what it'll yield is if there is a non-empty core, then X will the solution to this linear programming formulation would uh, be x, which would be 
um, one vector in the core. So, one transpose x will be equal to v of n and x would belong to the core when the core exists. That's when a non-empty core exists. Now, suppose one transpose x, the value of this after we solve it, yields a value that's more than v of n. This is neither efficient nor feasible, right? So, if the solution um, one transpose x would be more than v of n, then we can conclude that the coalition game does not have a uh, non-empty core. The core is empty. 